Good morning. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Good. Good. I'm very happy to hear that and I'm really happy to see that everyone is becoming more comfortable with each other and with the course and that's great um, given what we're going to be talking about in just a few minutes. Okay. Um, what we're going to do now is uh, a bit of an exercise and I'll give you the rationale for that exercise and um, what I'm really hoping is that given that we're becoming a little bit more comfortable with each other we'll have the opportunity to speak our minds and don't worry about offending anyone uh, you're not gonna offend me you're not gonna offend the instructors uh, I want all of you to bring really good discussion so hi Lou speak up I want to see you active. Really? Don't be quiet. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. No, 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 no. No, no, no. We want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. We want to hear from everyone. And if you haven't spoken up already, um, no one's pushing you, no one's forcing you. But, but we hope you'll become more comfortable, okay? Okay. Uh, so the title is Balancing Social and Ecological Needs in Conservation Efforts and this is going to be a little bit more of a pliable experience. It's a little bit more of a, uh, you'll see it's a bit of a game that we're going to play. So here's what we've done so far. Previous lectures have emphasized the range of different considerations when thinking about conservation implementation, right? We've talked about a lot of different things that one might consider and you're probably thinking at this point okay I have I have a, a design element I have uh, I have to think about whether to protect species or ecosystems um, Mona has very nicely gone through us in a very careful way thinking about the design strategies thinking about species selection uh, town had earlier mentioned that we could all agree on certain things like we don't want to see any species loss um, we have to consider local people when Lee very nicely went around the room and said you know what what works what what works for based on your experiences quite a few have said you know we need to consider local people and we've we've in a, in a very broad way talked about some possible solutions we've talked about hunting we've talked about cash transfers conditional and non-conditional as Lee very nicely uh, pointed out um, Emily pointed out that she very strongly believes in sustainable utilization so so, and and that's, that's great, we want to see more of that. And of course there's this notion of community development programs, right? Now, we're going to keep everything in mind there, but we're going to transition from critical thinking to critical practice, okay? And to do this we're going to rely on a brief role-playing exercise. Each of you will take on particular roles, and we'll think about how to balance these different needs, right? Um, what, is our, what is our goal here? We, we want to we move beyond just being subjective and just being too analytical, right? We need something concrete to move forward, right? And we have to think about now involving multiple people, what we often called stakeholders. So what's our learning objective here? Help us communicate better on what we can do to move forward. We want to lend weight to different voices. Hopefully come to some level of compromise that leads to productive efforts moving forward. And problem solving regarding the very tough issues regarding conservation. And so here we're going to come up with a theoretical game. We'll talk more about this quite extensively. A group of participants will take on different roles. Some of you will be from the state, either through the Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife or through the Ministry of Livestock and Agriculture. Some of you will be conservation practitioners, either at the local level, the state level, or the international level. You, some of you will be local people and some of you will be tourism stakeholders, okay? So, here's the game. We're in a particular country, somewhere in Africa, the Republic of Bilalia, <laughs> and 
Uh, the Republic of Bilalia is a, is a is a fairly new country. Isn't that a parasite you get when you go swimming? No, that's Bilharzia. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, now, uh, we, there, we, there is a proposal on the table for the establishment of a new conservation area. It's called Montoli uh, Conservation Area. It was named after three explorers, Mona, Lee, and Town. Um, the proposed size of this protected area is about 500 square kilometers. It's a coastal tropical forest. It's got three vegetation zones, or two main vegetation zones. It's got a, 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 a woodland thicket area and a more open spaced area. Um, it's surrounded to the north by pastoralists, which are about 60% of the population. It's a drier climate where the pastoralists are. And to the south, you have farmers, which is um, about 40% of the population, and it's wetter. It's a total population in the surrounding district of about uh, 4,000 people. Um, but more importantly, it's a newly discovered biodiversity hotspot. We, you have the really rare Townsend weaver. Um, the survey for how abundant this uh, rare bird is, um, you can see the scientific name there. It's uh, Plosius Townsendi. Townsendi. I'm sorry. Uh, that was spelling me ever there. But it was named after one of the early explorers to this conservation area. Um, you have the golden legged shrew, which is highly abundant, and you have the Monica's caracal. Um, and there have been about 10 verified sightings of this caracal. You can see the names are all derived from, <laughs> from some of our fearless leaders. Um, and here's a map of the area. Okay? So the black line is the proposed study, uh, the proposed uh, site of the, of the protected area. The blue dots are sites where there have been verified caracal sightings. Um, you'll see this map over and over again. There's a little lake called Lake Emily. Um, there's a core weaver habitat. And then uh, surrounding the core weaver habitat, we have the shrew habitat. And it's surrounded by farmers and pastoralists. And the Hawaii, uh, the, sorry, it's wide the river, uh, the H is silent. Um, the scale bar there is about 10 kilometers, and there's a main road, okay? There's a site of a proposed lodge and the proposed site of a school, and you can see the farmers are to the south where it's wetter, there's a precipitation gradient, and uh, the pastoralists to the north, and you can see that there's a, a perennial river leading out of the conservation area, but it's been drying up quite a bit, okay? So why do we want to make the case for this new protected area? Um, we want to provide biodiversity protection. Remember one of our goals earlier that we all said we could agree on was no species loss. Uh, we want to preserve a key source of water because there's a river that's coming out of it that is essential for human livelihoods and key e ecosystematic services. It provides alternative opportunities for people that have historically used the area. Some are using it on an illicit basis, illegally. Some are using it on a, on a need basis. Um, there are proposals uh, surrounding the, the protected area, that the protected area would be accompanied by a, a tourist lodge, and the idea here is to diversify some of the livelihoods. Okay. Everyone on board so far? Okay. Now this is all made up, but brings in realistic elements. Okay. So what we're going to do is divide into groups. Uh, Mengistu and Emily, you're going to be from the Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife, so get together. You can, you can break up into your groups right now, okay? So, Mangusta, come and sit next to Emily. Uh, Kumara and Ben, you are from the Ministry of uh, Agriculture and Livestock. Uh, Aladin and Sisi, you are from, uh, you are local conservation practitioners. Um, Hailu and Town, you are state practitioners. Um, Ura and Abeje, you are farmers. <laughs> uh, Yanko and Temene, you are pastoralists. <laughs> and Mike and uh, Fikerte, you are um, tourism stakeholders. Okay, <laughs> everyone go sit next to each other now. Yeah. <laughs> come on, come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. <laughs> 